In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Ham Clock. It's a ham radio based application that runs on a number of different systems. You can run them on uh, items such as the little Raspberry Pi devices. Uh, this is one from a company called La Potato. Kind of an interesting name. The this kit is very similar to Raspberry Pi where it has all the different uh, inputs and outputs. Uh, it runs on the micro SD card. You install Linux on these and then I've got a guide that I'll show you here in a few minutes that will walk you through step by step. You'll be able to just copy and paste the commands uh, right into the l window and then at the end of the video you should be able to have your own ham clock up and running. So if it sounds interesting and you'd like to make one yourself, just stay tuned and I'll be right back. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we are going to, there's a link I've provided in the documentation that will take you to this site here for the board we're using. Um, you're gonna see different OS's here. I just use Ubuntu. Um, I've gone ahead and clicked on it. I can show you what that looks like. So it'll, this will be some instructions for putting on Ubuntu onto the to this system here. Uh, I will say you're going to want to use this OS, this specific one made by the company for these little boards um, because they've been tweaked to work with the hardware that's in there, and it makes it pretty straightforward. They install real easily. Uh, we're just going to download the server version because you want it to be pretty lightweight. Um, and this is the version for the board that we've got. So I have already gone ahead and downloaded it. And what we're going to do now is I've got it um, pulled up in using this, this, this imager that the company recommends. And uh, there's a link for it on the website, and I'll also put it in the documentation. You've put in the uh, SD card, and it's just in my system, it's going to be the letter G. And we're going to have it listed there, and we can just go ahead and write. Um, we're going to let it overwrite. One of the things I'll talk about here while this is writing to the SD card is the SD card itself. Um, these boards can uh, work these little SD cards pretty hard. so. Um, I'm just using something inexpensive just to do this tutorial, but what I'd recommend is, and I'll have a link for it in the documentation as well at the bottom of this video, um, that uh, SanDisk makes a card for industrial use, and they're they're pretty inexpensive. I mean, you don't need a very large card. Eight or 16 gig would be more than enough, and and they're pretty inexpensive. They'll handle the read and writes better than the cheaper cards. Um, I mean, you, uh, and I think you'll have better use in, or better results in the long run. So, okay, so let's uh, minimize this. Now, what we're going to want to do is go, let me move this over, go to the, uh, to the newly written card. We're going to open up this user data. I'm just going to notepad. We're going to open this up, and what I'm going to recommend that you do is uh, change this to something that's a little bit makes a little bit more sense. So, I already have a ham clock working on my network, so I'm going to name this one my ham clock, and we can save that. Now, for uh, this is just an example. I already have a system up and running, and I've already done this to done these same steps, and that card's been put into the little computer. So let's close out these. Um, now here's the, going to be a little bit of the tricky step, and, and it's not going to be something I'm going to specifically be able to help you with in the video, um, but that's going to be determining what the IP address is of your uh, new system that you've just plugged in. Um, you're going to want to log into your router um, is going to be the easiest way, um, but everybody has different routers. So that's going to be something you'll need to find on your own. And, and it's something I can 
try and help you with if you just can't figure that out, but you're going to want to go and look um, in your system. So I have found mine um, and in my router and it gave it the IP address that I'll type in here now. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to, let me close this back out. So you'll go to start and you'll type in CMD and that will give you your command prompt. Um, you can run it as administrator if you'd like to, um, just to make sure that everything works correctly. And here we'll type in SSH. The username and password for the system that you've just built is, or the default is Ubuntu and the password is Ubuntu. So we'll type that in. Um, we're going to type in at and then the IP address that your network assigned to the system. Uh, um, it's going to want to put in a serial number or a key for this specific system. So you're going to want to just type in yes here um, and you'll type in the password and that's going to be Ubuntu. Um, the script is going to automatically make you change that password. So you'll type in Ubuntu again, and then you're going to want to carefully type in a new password. Um, and when you hit enter, it's going to disconnect you and it will make you log in with that new password. Oh, I need to retype it. Okay, so it disconnected us. We should be able to log in with this new password. Okay, so it looks like it's ready to go. Uh, let me pull my notes here. All right, so we are gonna want to, right now you're at a standard level user. Um, you're gonna want to elevate yourself to an admin account. Just, uh, and I'll have this type, you can just copy and paste these. Are you gonna do sudo? All right, it's just about to finish up here. It actually ran for quite a while, um, depending upon when the images are put onto the the device's server page. Uh, it could be varying lengths of time for this to finish up. Um, and now also one thing to consider is that these systems don't have a processor like your computer, like the desktop computer, laptop computer, you may be watching this on or working on this on, it's, they're gonna run a little slower. Um, and it's really updating a lot of this package uh, or the OS. So um, the, where it may run this a little bit slow, running the ham clock is not gonna be a big difference. Um, or it's not gonna, it won't, it'll run it just fine. So we don't have to worry about that. Um, so uh, what I've done over here on the right is I've now put in the, um, I'm gonna make this available where we're gonna go through these and basically you'll just be able to copy and paste this right into this window here and um, make this process pretty straightforward. All right, finally finished up. Uh, so what we'll do now is I'm gonna take, there's a command that we're gonna copy in here um, that this is going to allow us to basically reconfigure the time zone data for the operating system that we've just installed. What you'll do is go to um, up to America or wherever you're at, 
and I'm in the Eastern time zone, so I'm going to just quick jump. Um, I just hit end and jump to the ends, and I'm in the Eastern time zone. So we'll tap down to OK, and that just reset from universal coordinated time to my local time. Um, now, depending upon how much of the package uh, updated, you may or may not want to reboot at this time. I'm going to go ahead and reboot because it downloaded a lot. Um, so we'll let that run for a second or two. One of the things that you can do to see when your system is back online is you can run a ping command. And if you add a dash T to the end, it'll just sit there and ping until you start seeing a response back from the system that it's fully rebooted and is back online. And that's one of the things that I, tools I use for networking. Um, so let's look over here real quick. So what we're going to do now is these are going to, we're going to, uh, when this is finished, um, rebooting and the system has come back online, we will SSH back into it and start running these commands. Okay, so we're back up now. So you'll just hit Control C. Okay, and we will SSH back into the system. It's going to be that password that you changed to. Um, we want to elevate again to get us back to, you'll see here it's got Ubuntu as the username. We want to elevate to the uh, admin level. So when we do that, you'll see that it switched to root. Okay, so now we're going to basically just take this first line and these are just going to be uh, install packages. So we're going to install curl, make, and you can see, and even the zip program. All right, so now we're back to the command prompt. Uh, we'll just move to step two and go ahead and copy that. And then we'll paste that in. And what this is doing is it's actually going to download the ham clock package from the Clear Sky Institute. We will then want to unzip it. Okay, that was pretty quick. And now we want to change into the directory that was just created when it unzipped all those packages. And you can see that by here, that ESP ham clock. We're just going to change into that directory now. And I, you can see I'm just copying and pasting everything right off of my little cheat sheet here. Now, according to this documentation, you can choose different resolutions. So uh, a lot of people, I think by default, just go with the 16 by 960. Um, so going on to step five, we're going to just copy the make command, paste that in, and you can see that it just went ahead and hit enter, and it will start to build all the little boxes All right, finally finished up. Um, so the, the next command that we're going to run, um, this will actually create the program, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll just copy line six and paste that in. All right, so we have finished up. And what we're going to be able to do now is we'll go to our cheat sheet, and we will run uh, hem clock. With the ampersand, it will give us the, uh, the process that's running. So now what we'll be able to do is it is not a secure page. Let me just 
and you'll go to the IP address. It's at port 8081, so you'll put uh, colon 8081 and then the name of the file is live.html. Once that loads, you'll be able to come here and you'll type in your call sign. And I don't really know that there's a lot of other uh, things that you'll want to change. Um, I'm not running a cluster. This is going to be running by itself. Um, just getting started. I'm not really sure what a lot of these settings are, and it kind of goes outside the scope of this video. Really, it's just trying to get this set up for you. Um, this just shows you some of the um, different things you can change if you want some of the settings on the page. Uh, once you've gotten past all that, you can just hit done and it will start to determine where you are, uh, what the best time server is, and we'll start to do a countdown and any second now the page will load and you'll be able to, you're online, you've got your ham clock running. And as I say, these things are uh, not as fast as a regular computer, but I, once it's up and running, I don't, I think it will run just fine. And for as low a price as they are, I think it's really neat to be able to do this yourself. So let's go back to the, we'll minimize this for a second, and let's go back to our instructions. The way this is set right now is if this were to reboot this program, you'd have to log back in and turn this back on. So there is a, just like Windows, there is a startup um, process that runs. We're going to edit that startup process, and that's going to be this next command here, cron, uh, cron tab. And we're going to, uh, not type in that right, let's just do this. Uh, all right, so we'll copy. and paste that. And then uh, I find the number one to be the best, the nano uh, editor. Um, so we'll do that. And this file is just the things that are starting up, but what we're gonna wanna do is copy this whole line here, copy that, and then come back here and you'll need to use the down arrow um, to get down to the very end of this and hit enter once and then just um, paste that in. And then we're going to want to save this file. Um, so you're going to want to hit control X and then we want to save. So you're going to hit yes and enter. And that basically added this these lines of text to the end of that file or this process. So now you have it set up so that it will survive a reboot. Um, so anytime you reboot this system, if you need to run any patches or updates, it will launch itself. So if we go back, hit re you know, reset, it will, the, it's still there. Um, and as I say, you'll be able to survive a reboot. So that's basically the end of this tutorial. Um, so let me know in the comments if you guys, if anybody actually does this and if you find it useful, um, and please subscribe and, and hit the notification bell and you'll be notified when new videos come out. Otherwise, 73, it's KE4IZO, signing off.